if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey friends, see that helmet? See that mark? For some dang reason, people lately keep talking about my ticks and my, you know, pulling on my shirt all the time or whatnot. And in this video, I'm going to explain why and it has to do with that tire mark on that helmet. So stay tuned if you're interested, my friend. What really inspired me to put this video together is my buddy Lance on Facebook just had this awesome post today and I really didn't want to comment on it because I didn't want to take anything away from like the legends and the people in that story. This Robert P uh, Robbie Peterson, uh, I believe 1989, the same year he's talking about in this story, was the first year that my, my buddy back in the day named Thane Bernheit uh, he entered, I met him on the loop cruising motorcycles and he is the one who introduced me to World Superbike and we drove the eight hour trip, seven, eight hour trip from Sioux City, Iowa up to Brainerd, Minnesota and we were hooked and we said that weekend like we're going to go road racing. I think I was 17 at the time, something like that, but, um, we did put a bike together and I wanted to show you, uh, some of the memories and memorabilia because that is one of the few race bodies I have kept all these years was off that ZX6 off my first race bike and that one was instrumental and really why Lance's post was so instrumental to me memory wise was I crashed there and was in a coma and woke up in the hospital uh, after a couple days and this is the helmet Doug Chandler Repka Rye and you can actually see the uh the Dunlop tread pattern. And if you're an old school, maybe somebody from like Ryan's Road Racing Lounge or the fellows there, somebody, and you can tell me what tread, if you can look at that tread pattern and tell me what model of Dunlop that is, you get hotter inch stickers. That would be ridiculously cool. But it wasn't cool that day. Uh, it's a pretty bad deal. Obviously terrible for my family and my girlfriend at the time who was with me, but super scary. Woke up strapped to a bed and uh, I literally uh, thought I was paralyzed. They had taken my leathers and folded them up. I don't even know how they got them off me. They had taken my leathers and put them at the end of the hospital bed. And as a, uh, God, I'm trying to remember if I was, uh, I don't know, 17, 18 years old. I think I was 18 when that happened. My brother was still alive. So I think I was 18. And uh, I had a severe head injury, uh, compressed my neck. Uh, it really has affected me the rest of my life. And even just recently, somebody on YouTube was, you know, making fun of me and, oh, look at his Twitch and all that. And uh, I, I don't care. I just laugh, whatever, idiot. But, uh, but uh, if you see me twitching a lot, that's because uh, 600, 700 pounds landed on my head at 100 and some mile an hour. And uh, it was a bad day. But chances we take the the other thing that's kind of wild is of all my leathers over the years i mean this is my current suit but i keep hanging on to that original suit <laughs> i've gotten rid of a lot of stuff when i moved from iowa i was kind of getting into the whole minimalistic lifestyle and and trying to uh you know just get rid of excess but i could not let go of my first set of leathers, uh, I kept my Vanson coat, of course. How could you ever get rid of a Vanson? Uh, I need to throw that on, maybe. You know, that, that Vanson coat, it works pretty good. You know, it looks right, right in one of the choppers. But anyway, I, my leathers, the race body, and that helmet, they tell um, quite a story of where, where I was early in my career. And what's really wild about that, let me show you some other fun stuff. Uh, I'm going to have fun making this video. I hope you enjoy it. But I was so scared after that accident that I, I remember, wait, you know, obviously waking up and having to go through therapy and everything else and thinking, am I ever going to ride a motorcycle again? And, you know, I, I, I felt like I had to. And I, I don't recall who, but somebody said, you know what, you've, you've either got to get on quick or you might not ever do it at all. It's kind of like people, you know, have a horse accident or whatnot. If they don't get back on the horse and, and get going, you may never do it again. But there is that body. Look at that. Man, this, this bike, 
just brings back so many memories of my brother too because my little brother was alive and if many of you don't know my brother took his life when we were kids but these years man they were great years I and mean, he was around always out there working with me and uh anyway this bike um this bike was wild and it was super uncompetitive and it was super heavy i raced it uh a lot at brainerd minnesota and then beloit at uh blackhawk farms and everybody was on f2s and fcrs matter of fact i'm hoping my buddy thane will see this and somewhere in here cool little wheelie down straight away at uh blackhawk but where is it oh is that taka oh it's my roommate from japan motorcycle mechanics college taka this was a different zx6 for some reason i liked pick picking uncompetitive motorcycles to race uh kind of crazy let's see uh maybe it's this one yeah hey thane buddy let's see if we can get that to focus man he was fast back then too um god see kenny krebs was a fast guy back then it was just i don't know there's some awesome awesome memories for some reason back then i crashed all the time too i hear all my uh roommates and buddies from uh college at motorcycle mechanics school in, in iowa uh drove like six hours to come see me race over in uh illinois and i raced all day saturday was killing it you know for me i was i was pretty average and then the 20 minutes into the morning practice i wad the thing up cracked the engine cases and that was the end that was the end of that we uh oh man look at that yeah i crashed way too many times but uh the reason, the other thing I was going to say is about like not giving up and the whole saying to get back on the horse because ultimately we had a customer who became a, a good friend too, Rob Oliva, and he had moved here from the East Coast and wanted to build a bike and go do track days and actually wanted to go race. And I thought, oh, that's cool. I'll go try it again, you know, and I, I was, I was never that fast. I was like kind of mid-pack. And so this, this photo album really means a lot too because we, uh, we called it the eBay bike. And I literally, and I was challenging myself. I mean, I was like, like at this time, I think I was 27, 28, something like that. And I would do a lot of projects just to like challenge my own skill set. Even though I was a shop owner, you always got to be learning and growing and whatnot. So the challenge with this bike was, did I really know, did I really know what I was doing where I could literally just buy piece by piece and build a motorcycle? eBay had just started, so eBay was like the best thing ever back then for finally getting used parts. And so we literally um, started with a frame, bought from a stunt team, which turned out to be stolen. It was a whole nother talk show. That's awesome. And we built this bike, built the TLR, once again to race Super Twins and talk about an uncompetitive motorcycle. And uh, this picture I love because uh, Brian Nelson took it. He's quite a famous uh, uh, photographer for road racing. And it got used in the rule book the next year. But, uh, yeah, it got used in the rule book the next year. And then, believe it or not, um, I crashed in 2001. I crashed stupid hard. Let's see if we have any pictures of that. I crashed at Brain... Uh, Brainerd again, turn three, stupid hard. This picture, Rob, the Ducati, uh, crash turn three, stupid hard. Yeah, no, that was another one of our buddies, Brent. Um, I crashed stupid hard, and I was so pissed off that I'm like, that's it, I'm done, I can't do this anymore. It's too expensive. You know, we got a shop to run. I'm going to kill myself. And so I went out thinking it would be the last time I'd ever race. And believe it or not, I won. I'd never won before. Uh, Brainerd run, ran some pretty crazy grids. They'd run 40 to 80 riders in like one to two waves. And I don't know, maybe that's normal other places, but I, I thought it was kind of crazy. And anyway, I went out and uh, won won the race, man. That This is, this is another day we just had a blast had a blast but went on number one plate and i just i always think about um yeah look at those, those are fun times i always i always think about uh 
Oh, check this out. Check this out. Because back in the Beloit days, before I finish up my motivational thought, this was a helmet. Uh, I was uh, going through tech in at Blackhawk Farms app, actually. Blackhawk Farms Raceway in Illinois. And for some reason, we showed up at the track. We drove seven hours. And I was a dumb 20-some-year-old, right? And they uh, just, like, magically had this new rule that you had to put your blood type on your helmet. So you had to put your name, your number, your blood type, and then you had to have an ID in your leather. Like, it was like, what the hell? This was all new. And, I mean, I was raised by a single mom. I didn't have the best choices in life, uh, sometimes personally, and some that were handed to me. But I'll tell you this. I did not know my blood type. Like, I had no idea. And uh, so this was before cell phones, before anything. Like, I'm like, how am I supposed to get my blood type on the weekend? just drove seven hours. And I went back through tech, and it was the first weekend they did this. And I literally, I like, I, I went back and I wrote blood and I wrote full and the tech inspector laughed so freaking hard. They're like, just get out of here. Next time, come prepared. It was crazy. Whoa, but drop my phone. It was crazy. I don't want to edit these just like fun videos either, by the way. They're just meant to, to be entertaining. It allows us to have a conversation amongst friends. So appreciate you being here. But anyway, it was so damn funny. Uh, that they let us race. We had a great weekend. Thank goodness nothing happened. And I didn't need any blood, but <clears throat> um, I retired that helmet after that uh, just because it was too funny and, and for that reason. But man, motorcycles are freaking cool. I'm sure that you got some awesome stories. And if you have a great story, uh, share it with us. Or maybe we'll just interview you because it'll just be fun and entertaining. Uh, recently, uh, the Pigeon Podcast on Instagram. I apologize, I don't really know the fella, um, but he has great content. He's doing a lot of neat stuff. He just had a cool uh, contest where people could uh, tell their story, and I thought, that was a great idea. Maybe we ought to do something like that. But for starters, I just want us to all hang out, kind of get to know each other, and uh, <clears throat> I guess full circle back to where my thought was going on the motivational part of it. I can't believe that I went from... Uh, you know, a, a kid that just showed up at a World Superbike race, had a dream, ended up crashing and getting into a coma in the same corners like I was making the decision of, I want to do this, to then, years later, way years later, many years later, because I was, I was honestly kind of spooked and I think I was riding more to prove that I I was a dude and prove that I was cool and and prove that I could do it than than really like chasing pure ability and like skill set right like I was laser focused on turning wrenches but I did not dig into riding because I was I was scared you know from that crash and then so ultimately to to lose it all and then say that's it and then get that taste that sweet little drug. I remember the Dunlop tire guy. It always used to kill me at Brainerd. You'd go up and go, how you doing, man? He'd be like poking a needle in his arm, joking, goes, I'm getting my fix. I'm getting my drug. What are you doing? And uh, so I know what that adrenaline's like. Uh, still chasing that adrenaline in life in one way or another. Wrenching, teaching has really uh, been my drug for a lot of years. Uh, people are my drug and friendships are my drug. So I think this is uh, just an awesome little uh, run down memory lane about like not giving up and how things work out and can't believe that I had the right people in my life. Because anybody that goes out and gets like a number one plate, whether amateur or uh, professional, it's the most expensive $3 trophy you are ever gonna chase, but you'd never give it up for nothing when you've gone through it. And I think, I would never be able to say that I did it alone if it wasn't for the people that went with me, showed up, helped out, all that. None of it would have been possible. So I hope on this journey in YouTube, when you're turning wrenches and you're thinking about what you're grateful for, I hope How to, How to Wrench uh, shows up in your memory banks as something that's really been a, been a solid tool in your toolbox. Uh, to make you awesome. I hope you enjoyed this story. I can't thank uh, my buddy Lance enough for the posts that he puts that, especially like the old school stuff. Ryan from uh, Road Ra Ryan's Road Racing Lounge, he does a lot of that old stuff that just forces us down memory lane. So I want to thank you, Lance, for your posts. Made me think of some cool stuff. I hope you are all well. Anyway, I hope you all uh, be safe in these crazy times. Make it a great day. As always, keep wrenching and stay tuned. Mm -hmm.